Welcome back to season three of Yes, I'm Adopted. Don't make it weird. Today, Dave and I are going to be answering the rest of the questions that we missed out on on our 5A Summit live event. We're going to answer some more questions. Let's do this. Let's get into it. So this is going to be a longer video because there's a good amount of questions that we missed out on. So first of all, thank you guys for joining us for the 5A Summit. For those of you who weren't able to make it, that's fine. We're going to try to answer your questions now. But it was a good time. Yeah, it was fun. It was good. It was tiring. There were a lot of you here, and oh. as soon as it was done, we stopped smiling and took naps. <laughs> or went to bed. No, I, I was, was going to say it was we bed. Just went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> long, long nap. It was a long eight hour plus nap. Yep. So let's just get started here. The first question comes from Jaylee. It says, when you guys were younger, did you guys ever feel ashamed or bad about being adopted? Whew, we're starting it off just like... We're just going straight to Just that. right into it. Okay. <laughs> I guess it depends on how much younger, right? Because like as an elementary school kid, I didn't really think about it. Or you were just like, yeah, this is a thing. Right. right? But then in like middle school, high school, early high school, I don't know that it was shame so much as like... It's really hard to fit in and know yeah, this like one thing and... <laughs> that is like fundamentally different. And then by uh, the end of high school, college, adulthood, uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, just no. I don't know. What do you? No, think? I mean that's that's very similar to me. You know, in in middle middle school years, you're trying to fit in, you're trying to find your place in the world, and all this stuff, and um, like that was that was all I focused on. Mm -hmm. I just want to be normal. And being, you know, Korean and raised by white people, it was a little bit abnormal for people. And I did not like that feeling all that much. But then I grew to love that and being different than everybody else and being, you know, just, I'm going to say better. Being better than everybody else. Because <laughs> you're a Because I'm a treasure. <laughs> oh. um, but... <laughs> Yeah, it was, <laughs> like, when I was, like, you know, uh, 16 years old, I talked about this a little bit in the live event, so go back and check it out. Um, you know, being deathly ill and things, you kind of put things into different perspective. Uh, so, no, like, for a while, yeah, did feel not necessarily ashamed, but awkward about being adopted. Mm -hmm. But never really felt bad about it, though. I don't know. That's yeah. Me. Yeah. Did, did you feel bad? Not so much. Do you feel bad now? Maybe. Just right in this moment. <laughs> <laughs> I feel ashamed <laughs> right now. All right, next question. This comes from Andy. It says, one word for you, Enneagrams. And then she says other words afterwards that I'm going to read. <laughs> so it's, and do you think that your adoption affected your personality? This one's interesting to me now. Okay. Because um, my daughter is like two and a half, and I see so many of the tendencies that I have or had as a child in her, and I did not teach her any of that. Hmm. I did not teach her to be stubborn and bullheaded and all this other stuff that she is because she's my kid. Um, so nature versus nurture, my wife and I have been talking about it for the last couple of weeks now and because it's just so fascinating to be able to see the differences in, in my kid because I never had anybody to ask those questions. Hey, were you like this as a child? because I was like this. Um, so being able to see those different personality traits come alive in her uh, really puts things into perspective for me as far as that whole nature versus nurture thing. Yeah. Yeah. And Eagrams are a really interesting thing right now. Uh, Myers-Briggs was kind of big a few years ago. Yeah, I don't remember um, what number I am. Yeah, I don't know. I don't either. We haven't looked at it in a long time. Uh, but my pay to go back that's i mean a lot of the guys in the office are really into that right now but um as far as uh, adoption affecting my personality i think I, I would i would say that for me uh growing up i did a lot more um i don't know ad adapting my personality to meet the circumstances yeah to be where i was and it hasn't been Very really until so. <laughs> adulthood that i honestly have sat down and thought through a lot of things and been like okay now is this actually something i like do i want to right? be this person <laughs> or is this uh -huh. really my natural inclination right like right. there's so many things that as a kid i would just do <laughs> and now as an adult i look at and go like oh okay <laughs> maybe 
maybe I don't actually like this thing or like maybe actually I should change. this is not naturally who I am, you know. So um, I think it has effects, but I also don't think that those effects are necessarily permanent. No, uh, for some people it might. Again, this is our opinion. This is our story. For some people, you know, they're kind of angry and bitter about the whole adoption thing and. I'm going to refer to the first episode. If you haven't checked it out, I mean, you know, go watch that part. I don't remember what time. I might put it in the comments, but get the stick out your butt. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is from Michelle. How do you help your kids with separation anxiety? My eight-year-old still does not want me to leave her for 30 seconds, and she, or she thinks I'm never coming back. I want to help her through this. Smiley heart face. Oh. <laughs> This is both of us. Read a lot of books. Yeah. <laughs> or just never leave your child's yeah. side ever. Yeah. There's that too. It's mostly the ambiguity, right? Yeah. Like there's there's a, an innate fear that uh, this is just abandonment again. Um, and uh, a lot of that is honestly, it's practice and trust. And it's trust and practice right. over and over again. So like uh, The Connected Child is a book that I read recently that, that has some really concrete advice for how to deal with that separation in um, <laughs> both uh, like extreme preparation. So letting kids know exactly what's going to happen, exactly when how to keep track of it, yep. and maybe get them a watch, right? Like, Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah, here you go. Here's a watch. When the hand does this or the time says this, I'll be back here. And then absolutely do make not sure be late. you are back in time. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure that watch works. <laughs> You know? Oh, that would just be terrible. Yeah, and then you know, uh, for a lot of the time, it's uh, it's doing things incrementally. So like, don't don't be your first one should not be like I'm gonna be gone for the day. <laughs> be like, Good luck. here's thirty minutes, and I'm gonna go here. Uh, right. You know, and and kind of working up to it. Right. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good. Keep moving on. Cause we got a bunch more questions. Robin, curious, how you two met? Did you meet as adults? Uh, Davo and I did meet as adults. Um, I don't remember who introduced us. Was it Jason and Melanie? It must have been, yeah. It might have been, might have been the band. Would have been, might the, have been first, the band. Yeah, that's the right, because we did play together for a while. Um, and we just kind of bonded over the fact that we were the only two Koreans in, like, a 30-mile radius. So, yeah. Like, we didn't even know that each other were adopted, like, because his parents lived in Colorado. Um, you did know my parents before, I did. so you did know I was adopted, but I didn't know anything about you. Right. Um, so it terrified I, me a little bit. I don't think I brought it up either. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Not until much later. Did, when we met, did you just think I was just some I thought some you were Asian some guy? Asian guy with a really good accent. That's awesome. <laughs> you, you are so good at English. I, my English is fantastic. <laughs> I've been told that by many people. Yeah, so. <laughs> me too. It's terrible. I'm like, good, because that's the only language yeah. I know. It's uh, not bad. Yeah. <laughs> Yours could use some work. <laughs> and now we're sad. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, so we, um, we did kind of just kick it off right away. And then I was like, hey, we've known each other for two months. My fiance and I are getting married. You and your wife want to be in our wedding? And then they were. And we were. And then, and then we hung thing out, led and to then another. we didn't. Then we both moved out of the state. Yep, so like at the same places. time. Yep. You and went about to the same time. We both moved back into Michigan. Yeah. Three years later. Yep. You went to Georgia to hang out with Rev Coffee Roasters. Ah, <laughs> you should sponsor, um, or at least send coffee. <laughs> I'll let them send us some coffee. Send guys. coffee. That'd be awesome. Come on, that'd be great. Um, yeah. Yeah, so and then we, we both moved back to Michigan, and then we started working together because we're bad at being employees. Um, <laughs> Moving right along. Keep going. Emily, I have a cat. Good for you, Emily. There's more. I just wanted to stop oh, you're there. you just going to leave there? Yeah. Emily, I have a cat. Love that description. This is going back to when Devo called himself a cat. Are you affectionate? Um, no. <laughs> I am extremely affectionate with my wife and my children, and that is where that ends. Uh, Not for, me. No, mm. I don't like it when you touch me. I don't really. He like, hates it. It's great. I don't like really even being <laughs> this close to you. I'm gonna be honest. Like, two hand w lengths was kind of like my minimum distance like, that I I'll, usually I'll just, prefer. I'll just sit over on that the would edge be great. of my seat. Thank you for now on. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. That's uncomfortable. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, I'm absolutely a cat when it comes to that stuff. I, uh, I'm, I'm very affectionate and very uh, kind of, I don't know, cuddly with my, my kids and yep. my wife, kind of to an annoying degree. Um, <laughs> and then everybody else, it's, it's definitely pretty much. Don't like, touch me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you. When we were over the other day, you were holding your daughter and just like I don't know if she was reading a book, you're reading a book or whatever, but mm-hmm. you guys were just just sitting on the couch like that. And I was like, he never does that with me. <laughs> now, see, at this point, as a joke, I might have thought to offer, but I'm pretty sure you'd take me up on it. So I'm not gonna. I'm not just gonna to take that. it over the edge. Yes, I'd, yes, I would. I'm not doing because that. they want to see that. No, they don't. Comment below if you want to see that. Uh, and then prepare for disappointment. <laughs> All right, this is from Jonathan. We have twin two-year-old Korean sons. Any suggestions for when and how to talk to them about being adopted? Uh, Should we wait for them to ask us? Now, you've read tons and tons and tons of people's thoughts on this. Yes. And the timing and the how-tos. So, go. They they know already. (laughs) Your kids are Korean. And I'm assuming you're white, Jonathan. That's just an assumption. Don't Unless you're Korean it. and you have the white name Jonathan because all adopted Koreans have, like, the whitest names. That's true. I don't know why that is. Mine is Dave O with an M- X. My, <laughs> <laughs> my name literally means British. Uh-huh. So, or yeah. Megalodor, destroyer of worlds. <laughs> Very white name. <laughs> You don't see any Asian people yeah. up with Megalodor Destroyer of Worlds. Uh, <laughs> your your kids are probably going to ask, and it's probably going to be at an early age, but for the most part, they know because they look different, and right. just when they bring it up, let them know, but for, I mean, they, they, they know that something has happened. Right. So, um, you know, there's probably never going to be a point where you're going to be like, this is the talk. <laughs> you're adopted. Like, right. I don't think it's probably going to come up that way. I never had um, that talk, I don't think. But, you know, whenever it does come up, you're going to you're gonna have that conversation with them. Right. Yep, that's good. All so right. We might have a break here. Yes, Bean? Yes. What are your thoughts on... Um, sorry, this is a little subject. This is... You oh. need to write it in the comments. If oh, you want. okay. This is me writing it. <laughs> okay, this is from Camera Bean... We talked about that. You should have been on the live stream. <laughs> you, why aren't you working with us, but you're not watching? I'm what so the sorry. heck? She had to give out ice cream. Yeah. And you didn't bring us any? I didn't work today. Wow. You could have dropped wow. by with now, ice cream afterward. Now I'm hurt. Um, <laughs> gotcha and other holidays and things like that. Like, we were never really big on i don't know i never did them some kids really seem to enjoy that some i think it's them. corny some people love it though. i just don't it's just not for me but i think that's more of an age gap thing than it is a, a like yeah. adoption thing and i said this last time but the only question that i would ask is does that mean i get more presents if so bring it on do they get more presents yeah they get presents so you, a you, present are you like a good I, present yeah. are you are you not getting presents because you're not adopted mm. is yeah. that are you mad about it no She's mad about it. I'd be mad about it. No, I think she's mad about it. I'd be, I think I'd be upset. She looks mad about it. It doesn't matter if she said that with a sneer. No, I'm joking. (laughs) We'll have this conversation with your parents later. Yeah. All right. So, (laughs) this next question comes from Robin. Says, Brett, did you or your parents often get the question, are you slash they real brothers? Most common question I'm asked having two sons. I hate it. Yes, they have the same mom and dad. They are real brothers. Real doesn't, and then it cuts off because I think we missed part of it. Hmm. I'm guessing real doesn't mean blood or something. I don't know. Sure. Uh, okay, so since I'm not Brett, I'm not going <laughs> to... I was going to say, you want to answer this one? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, no, I got that question all the time, um, especially when I was younger and my brother and I were together all the time. Uh, we always got the question, or my mom or dad would always get the question, hey, are they real brothers? And people would change it to blood brothers um, because, you know, that's more politically correct, I guess. Um, did they have the same birth genetics? I don't know. That's a weird way of putting it. Hmm. But, you know, it's, I don't know. It was one of those questions. It's just, it's like the first couple of times it was fine and innocent. But then it seemed like the same people were asking that question over again, and they forgot. Yeah. 
And then it got really annoying. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> like I, I can I remember multiple times the same people asking me that question. I'm like, I've already answered this. No, we're not. We are not real brothers. We are not blood brothers. Go away. Uh, so yeah, no, I, I completely <laughs> agree with you, Robin. I hate that question. It's so annoying. It's so annoying. But we get that question now. We do. But we kind of play it off that we are brothers. Just to see who we can mess with. That's true. There are a lot of people that think that, and we just kind of let it go. <laughs> yep. We've never said we are. They just assume, and then they just we just run with it. All right. Here we go. Sarah, OMG, the personal attack is so my son. Can you do a whole show on this topic? We did. It is the, I think, first or second episode of season two. There is a Trauma link brain. to it. Trauma Brain Part 1 in the comments already. You can find it there or go back and find uh, that video or keep an eye out for the website when we have some of this stuff archived or uh, we probably will hit that again more in depth later on. Yeah, because per- everything is a personal attack. Cindy, many, ma- many, ma- many adoptees because of trauma suffer from low self-worth. Where did you derive your self-worth? Has parenting given you much of this? I'm guessing, like, our parents? Did our parents give us I'm gonna assume that's a lot that of that means. self-worth? Yeah. Yeah, let's go with that one. Okay. You go first. Uh, yeah, yes, um, which is verifiably true. Most adoptees do have something that, that believes that there is something innately wrong uh, with us because of the original or initial relinquishment. Yep. Uh, so something is probably wrong. What did we do wrong? Why? It was our fault. Right. Uh, and there's a self-worth issue that definitely attaches itself there. Um, I will say that, yes, I do believe parenting has a great deal to do with the quote-unquote recovery Yeah. Uh, in, in that regard. So, you know, your parents, as... Okay. As an as a parent, it is your job to be the adult, oh. to be the authority, what, and to instill identity. Ah! Sorry. That's, that's going to be rough for some people, <laughs> but that's your job. Your your kid's job is not to come up with their own identity. Oh gosh, please it's, no. It's your job as the parent to instill <sighs> identity in your children. And you're going to see that. You're going to know naturally who they are because you're the one that spends the most time with them. But um, that's your that's your gig. And so additionally, you also have to know you pretty well. That's hard for a lot of people. There's a whole series we could do on this, and maybe we will at some point. But um, Self-worth, yeah, man. That, that worth comes from identity, and that's your job to give it to them. Yeah. No, that's that's huge. That's so right. This one comes from Dee Dee. Dee Dee. Please do more about how you saw correction as a personal attack. We just kind of did this one. I'd love to hear more as we have this major issue uh, in our 14-year-old. Now, everything is not a personal attack. But if you say, hey, can you go empty the dishwasher? But I was already planning on doing it. It's that you didn't trust me enough to go and do that myself. That's how I picture it. And that's how I still sometimes picture it. And I have a hard time with that. And I'm working on it, wife. I promise. Or if you did it, but you accidentally missed something. Oh, yeah. That was that was worse for me. Yeah. If I messed something up, right. it made me never want to do that again. Hey, can you... You missed a fork. You'd be like... <laughs> I hate all forks, and I hate you for pointing out the fork. <laughs> <laughs> Why does the fork have to exist? <laughs> it's the fork's fault. I don't even like forks. <laughs> anyway, should use chopsticks for everything. Yeah, that one's rough, but uh, knowing as an adult that that's a thing really has helped uh, <laughs> us kind of take hold of those thoughts and and be able to start changing them. Yep. All right, Marnie. I find the more I learn about adoption from the adoptee's perspective, I almost feel paralyzed as a parent. How to raise my daughter, three years old, without overemphasizing the difficult parts and not negating them either. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah, the... the... (laughs) I'm just going to leave it (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, next. No. (laughs) Um, You want to talk a little bit about the... um... <laughs> what was that somebody, noise? Somebody left and they had a good time. Yeah, you you want to talk a little bit about the paradox of choice? You know, 
just the the oh, paralyzing. Yeah, factor that kind of has it. something to do with that now. Like we we experience a thing where the more options you have, the less ability we have to make choices or make decisions because there's always that thing that we didn't do yep. right or we could have done and didn't or whatever. So it's almost it's almost paralyzing to move forward or to make any decision or live with, with it. Um, the the important aspect of this here, again, is that um, as many perspectives as you see and as many things as, as uh, you can learn and, and, and it happen, your job is to make decisions. So, uh, <laughs> you know, you're going to take in as much as you can that you think is helpful. You're going to figure it out and then you're going to move forward. Right. Yep. So make some decisions and live with them. Those are the things that you did, and whether or not it worked is kind of inconsequential so much as now you just deal with your next decision. Okay. It's time to move forward. So nope. uh, we absolutely understand that paralysis. We absolutely – I mean, shoot, I have – we have kids. Yeah. Right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but – It's terrifying sometimes. That's, that's why you're the parent. Yep. It is. This is from Kim. Is it true that children or our children should know their full story by 12? Did you? I have read this many times. Have you heard that? Like, like adoption children. Like by 12? Like by 12, by 12 years specific... old, they need to know their full story. I, I don't know that I've heard that statistic or that number, but I mean, yeah, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. That's very formative years. Yeah. Um, where they're deciding identity. Not so much, you know, like the muscle memory or the skills or anything like that, but they're deciding identity at that point. And especially if you are putting them in any kind of public education where everybody else is also trying to decide identity, uh, they kind of have this group mob mentality where they will all get together and decide what they all want to be and how they want to act and how they want to respond to things. And if that does not line up with their own personal morals or convictions, sometimes people will conform to that just to fit in. So this could definitely help somebody, you know, help your kid um, form that identity and that way you can speak that identity into them without a lot of these other outside influences kind of mucking up the whole process. Right. Uh, by 12, your kid probably has some of the story anyway. Mm -hmm. And if you don't provide the rest of it, then basically their brain is going to fill in. make it up themselves. Whatever they feel is necessary in order to, to do that. And so uh, it's much easier to have the full truth as early as you think you can handle it, or as early as you think the kid can handle it, yep. um, in order to be able to process that and mature growing forward. Yep. Truth. All right. Linda, what do you think of doing Ancestry DNA or my 23andMe DNA testing? Ancestry is the worst. Garbage. <laughs> Such garbage. <laughs> if you are Asian at all, even a little bit maybe you think, do not take Ancestry DNA. Because they have, like, no pools to pull from. <laughs> yeah. Ours it's are exactly terrible. the same, and it's not very useful. It encompasses Russia. Do we look Russian? I mean, no. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Nyet! Uh, we're going we're gonna to try some of the other ones as they go on sale. Yeah. Yeah, 23 and Me. we hear good things about for the Asian population being able to get more specific information. But right now, we are just East Asian, according to Ancestor DNA. So thanks for lumping us in that. Um, all right, we have two more. Here we, oh, no, three, three more. Three. Sorry. Count. Uh, Cindy, I can't count. I'm not that kind of Asian. Uh, <laughs> 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 Woo, racist joke. Uh, my kids struggle with extreme unresolved anger. They were adopted at an older age. Did you? Did it go away? And what helped? Hmm. Um, I am essentially the Hulk. I am always angry. Just not big enough. Just not big enough. Yeah, I'm not green. <laughs> I could make myself green on video, I guess. You're the improbable yeah. Hulk. <laughs> uh, no, when, when I was younger, I was, uh, and I've said this a couple times, I was the bully. Uh, I used to get in fights with kids all the time and not just, you know, be like, you're stupid. No, you're stupid. Well, I hate you. Not those kind of fights, but I'm going to send you home to your parents' bloody type of fights. Uh, I've been jumped a couple times by people who thought that they could take me because, I, I mean, it's my fault. I was mean to them first, and so they tried to get revenge. Um, and that was a huge part of my identity until I was about like 15 years old. Um, there were a lot of outlets that I figured out. Music was a huge outlet for me during that time. 
Um, I learned the drums when I was 15 years old. My parents bought me a drum set and we put it in the basement and I threw on some headphones, listened to some punk rock or some heavy metal, and then just learned to play the drums. Uh, that was a huge outlet for me, so that really did help. Um, being able to have something else to channel that energy into and focus on that is, is huge when it comes to dealing with anger. Um, I've known a lot of just angry people, not necessarily adoptees, just angry people in general. And they all say to be able to channel it into something else because otherwise the energy is just going to be used up here and drive you crazy until you want to punch somebody. That's how it works. Um, yes, it does go away as, as you mature, but you kind of have to make the decision for it to go away. Um, and a lot of the times that has to do with facing it head on. And some people are not mature enough yet to face that head on. Why am I angry? You have to be able to ask those questions. Um, but I do know if my parents asked me that question, I'd probably get more angry. So tread lightly on that one. Um, if it gets to the point where you feel like you need to intervene and ask, then by all means, go for it. You're the parent, you make the decisions. Uh, but I know if my parents asked me, why are you angry all the time? I would see that as a personal attack. And then I would probably attack them personally. Hmm. Yeah. Therapy? <laughs> that too. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was a story. Yours was one word. Come on, man. <laughs> Try yeah, to show me up. Uh, yeah, yeah. words do good. There's, there's a lot of books on the subject. Uh, typically, are. that anger comes from something that would be really difficult to understand without firsthand experience, which uh, knowing that part of it allows you to have more grace toward the external whatever is actually happening. But for the most part, um, outlets and therapy. Oh, let's therapy. All right. <laughs> Second to last now. Okay. We're almost there. Two more. All right. This is from Mel. A question that my husband and I have in mind. We will go to South Korea in two weeks. And the huge question is, do we keep our Korean son's name as first and then our Canadian name after or the opposite? I know that identity is a huge deal and it's hard to find the good answer. I don't know that there's a right answer to that. Uh, in our, in my experience, my legal name is, uh, David James Koo Don Hoon Overholzer. So it's, that's my full name. It's on my documents. It's everywhere. Um, I don't know that I would necessarily miss it if it weren't there, but because I have, uh, really intentionally taken that as part of my identity, uh, I've, my kids also have, have Koo as part of their names, mm. uh, because it is who I am. Uh, I think some kids maybe, if I were going to err on one side, I would err on the side of keep it there, but they're a hundred percent your kids, right? Uh, yep. so the name you give them is their name, but also they have a heritage and if they want to keep it, they can. I was named after Brett Michaels, I'm pretty sure. So mine's different. Uh <laughs> No, that seems accurate. Yeah, I do know this. So my Korean name, <laughs> uh, my Korean name's Kim Hyun Sayuk. Uh, so Hyun would be my first name if I were to keep that. And the culture that I live in, if my name was Hyun, would be really weird, probably, uh, because everybody is named, you know, like James or Josh or Jordan or fill in the other J names around the Jeremiah. area. Jeremiah. Yeah. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of these, you know, like white names because it's, it's the white community. It's, you know, like American culture. Uh, so this is me personally. Like I remember my, like my friends and stuff would ask me my Korean name and I was almost not ashamed, but kind of scared to say it because that's all they wouldn't want to call me. They, they all would want to try to call me by my Korean name. And, and that wasn't necessarily my identity. Um, you know, like, it's, it's a part of my heritage, and I, I do appreciate it now. I love that I do have that name. But as a kid, it was more of like this, oh, uh, please don't call me that type of thing. So it, it's situational, honestly. But again, as we've said multiple times already, you're the parent. You, you make the decision. Like You give them options as they're older and they can understand different things and explain to them why you did things a certain way. 
but ultimately you're the one who has to make the decision. So, you know, go for it. Most of the Asians that you meet will have given themselves an Americanized name. That's anyway. very true. A lot of Koreans and stuff, yeah. It, I mean, I might tell you can cut this if you want to. So I used to work at a Thai restaurant. Just do it. And I'm not cutting it. <laughs> Stay. I, I used to work at a Thai restaurant, and uh, the kids were all in high school of the, yeah. the owners of that I restaurant. Love story. And uh, one of them is name went by the name Presley, but that was not his name. They were Laotian Hmong. And uh, Which is awesome. And yeah, and they ran this Thai restaurant. And it was amazing, and I loved working there. And uh, but he went by he went by Presley, and the one of his friends' mom came in to the restaurant uh, and they we were there having dinner and she as their waiter she gave me this this enormous rant about how we should be a lot, like what's his real name what's his like asian mung name we <laughs> we can be trusted to 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 say the name and if they just teach us right and blah 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 like why does he have to go by presley and blah 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 and all this stuff social justice and um uh, Got through. I mean, it was like a five minute tirade on just this this whole idea. And so she gets to the end of that and goes. So takes a breath and says, "Okay, by the way, what's your name, Dave? <laughs> My name is Dave. Can did I you take a, your order? Did you get a tip? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> that story was tip enough. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that's great. She just didn't know what she was getting herself into. I love that story so much. Good times. All right, last question. Um, this is from Kim. Mm -hmm. Uh, at what age did you know your full story? 34. (laughs) I, I don't think that I've ever not known as much of the story as I wanted to know. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I really was able to process a lot of it until honestly fairly recently, uh, but I've always had access. I've always been given straight answers about everything. I've never not known whatever I wanted to know. Right. Uh, uh, it hasn't been until this last couple of years that I've like gone through my, my file yeah. and seen things that I don't remember being told before, but that doesn't mean that I didn't know them. Uh, but, uh, you know, commonly people, I guess, are saying age 12, but I think their kids are probably, as long as you're being honest, they're probably going to always think they have their full story because they'll have the full story that they can handle at that time. Yeah, and as you grow older, the the more curious that you get, the more you're going to want to dig into it. So the more of the story you're going to uncover. Uh, so we're, we're still learning. We're still learning things about us and, you know, um, what Korean culture looks like in our families and our lives and, um, you know, the heritage and the family members that we tentatively have out there. Uh, there's a lot that we're just now digging into at an older age. And so, uh, like he was saying, we felt like we knew the full story before, but like now we're just uncovering more of that story. It's fun. Like having conversations like this is entertaining to be able to talk to people because it makes you ask yourself questions, which I'm a huge proponent of, like asking questions. Like take that time to think about things yourself. It's huge. Red ordered a bento box from the Korean place next door, but he had to Google how to pronounce everything. I did. Oh, my goodness. I was not about to call them and butcher the name. It was the spicy marinated pork. and uh, Which was delicious. Jyuk Bokem? Bokem? That's why you looked it up. I don't remember anymore. This was yesterday. Because <laughs> you looked it up because you didn't know, but also because we have this, like ridiculous inherent need to just not look stupid oh gosh yeah no don't which is most people but like take it another 20 percent for adoptees so that's it for all the questions that we took during the 5a summit which was exhausting and awesome and awesome thank you guys so much yes thank you for being a part of that and uh keep an eye out because we may at some point try to do it again uh there's been we'll a lot you. of talk and people saying, you need to do that again. You need to do it again. We'll let you, you do it again. How about that? Sorry, Dark Maul. Oh, Dark Maul. Taking out he was, your he was intensity. Angry. I know. Sorry wow. about that, buddy. <laughs> so thank you guys for joining us on today's episode of Season 3 of Yes, I'm Adopted. Don't make it weird. We're so excited to be back. We have a lot of new things on the horizon coming here very soon. The horizon. The horizon's here. 
<laughs> so we have a lot of new projects that we're going to be starting up. We've heard your guys' voice telling us we need to do certain things. And we threw a lot of that out the window because it's so difficult, but we took some of it and we're actually going to do it. We're, we're going to try it. Yeah. Yeah. We're see. But we're also going to ask you to be a part of it. And we'll have some more details on the, that as the uh, months progress. Yeah. So. All right. Catchphrase out, Devo. What's, what's your catchphrase? Catchphrase out, Devo. I don't know. Ooh, I'm just gonna do. This. I don't have one. I need you to make one. I'm not. Now. I'm not gonna do that. See ya.